Welcome, dear listeners. I'm Jonathan Carlin. And I'm Benjamin Carlin. And we invite you to join us through the Gryffindor, your one-way ticket to the enchanting world of Harry Potter. So as ever, grab your wands, dust off your broomsticks, and join us as we unlock the secrets behind Philosopher's Stone, Chapter 4, The Keeper of the Keys. Oh, man. I see you went full name today. Yeah, I did go full name. I I went went full Benjamin. I I noticed that you had gone full Jonathan, and I, I... uh, I know that on on internet parlay we have largely referred to you as as the letter J. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, it didn't even occur to me that as a like as something I needed to consider as I was just typing out my own name. Like, hello, I'm Jonathan Carlin. Of course, that's my name. No, no need to rethink that. <laughs> right. No, no edits required whatsoever. Right. So anyway, but yeah, I was like, as long as Jay's going formal, I might as well go formal too. Right. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. A welcome to our extremely formal podcast. <laughs> you don't know, but I just gave you a proper bow. Um, okay, yes, yeah, so we are in to chapter four, The Keeper of the Keys, uh, which is, of course, uh, following up on our cliffhanger from chapter three, dun, dun, dun. Uh, wherein Harry's birthday counted down to the second and was delivered uh, a final boom right boom. at the crest of midnight. The crest of midnight. Wherein we know, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a different fantasy novel. You reading The Crest of Midnight? Oh, yeah, I, I can't it's put it so down. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, we, we know, of course, that the, the boom associated is the arrival of one Rubeus Hagrid, uh, who has arrived on the hut on the rock to collect one Harry James Potter uh, to deliver him his letter officially, officially. Um, in this chapter, we get a whole bunch of really, honestly, amazing dialogue where the Dursleys, who have largely had the upper hand on the situation between uh, Harry's relationship with them, uh, it's sort of gets turned on its head a little bit and all of a sudden there is somebody in the room who has more authority uh than vernon which is really just like a um it's it's it feels like such such justice it does feel like such especially because part of his intimidation tactics are just that he's like such a large person in general and then it's like then hagrid walks in and it's like even vernon's kind of just like a small guy next to hagrid (laughs) yes yes of course but there's, there's one of the amazing moments from from the movie that i that i quote all the time, which is, you know, the, the door busts in, you see the silhouette of giant Hagrid, and then he steps in the door, he's like, sorry about that. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> that's not actually in the book. It's not in the book, I know, yeah. but it, it's like, it, it is amazing because it's like, you can just tell so quickly uh, that Hagrid is, is like, while it is the, uh, you know, again, the middle of the night, while he can look potentially intimidating, he is just a complete kind-hearted soul who is just there to um, finally be able to return to Harry to bring him off to Hogwarts. Um, however, in this exchange, we, uh, we of course know that um, there's a bit of a, a little bit of um, what would be the, the right way to describe it here? Uh, the, the Dursleys basically do do stand up for themselves, I suppose. I they, mean, they, as they, best they can. As best <laughs> yeah. they can, you know. Uh, we discover that uh, to Hagrid's utter dismay, the Dursleys have not uh, taught Harry anything whatsoever about his position in the wizarding world. Or no. that he's a wizard at all, or even what Hogwarts is, or anything. Yeah, or anything. Or, yeah, even the, down to the simple fact that, um, yeah, he, like, he doesn't know anything think about what happened to his parents the there's the whole car crash situation and Hagrid is just like what you must be kidding me right now um so just uh, honestly this is a this is a really great chapter because you get like a lot of a, a lot of nice warmth uh really for the first time since since really chapter one uh when we last saw Hagrid and just sort of his like sadness towards leaving Harry so yeah he's back Happiness is back. He's back. It's fantastic. I love right away how when he gets, well, a few things. So right when he gets there, I love when he's like, couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? It's not been an easy journey. And it's like, first of all, how did he get there at all? Like, because the they leave on the boat, but the boat was already there. Like I don't understand how Hagrid got to the island. Yeah, you know? I, I, like, I don't. I don't specifically either. It's it's undisclosed magic of sorts. Undisclosed magic of sorts. And there's a lot of like undisclosed things Hagrid's supposed to be doing there. Um, so that's kind of funny. I guess he says like uh, I'm allowed. To, I was allowed to do a little bit of magic to get to you or to bring you your letter. And it's like by who? Who allowed you to do magic? Like, but what governing body like allowed you to do? It. like oh, was the, it just Dumbledore it's just Dumbledore it's just Dumbledore it has to be right because otherwise it's like anyone allowing you to do magic would then 
have to like acknowledge like how would you do it without a wand which they think you don't have which clearly you do so yeah, the, like it, it had to be Dumbledore but if it's Dumbledore then it's like then you can just always do magic right because you just work for Dumbledore at the school who's gonna know <laughs> right well and this is this is this goes back to one of our original we, we talked about a little bit in one of the past episodes but like again the the relationship between Hagrid and Dumbledore is utterly ironclad yeah uh, and in my mind it would largely be the case that like Hagrid regards rules as far as uh, the word of you know the big man himself, Dumbledore. And yeah. so, if Dumbledore authorizes it, then Hagrid is like, "If it's good by you, then it's good by me." It's good by me. Um, and uh, a big piece of that is, of course, the fact that you know Hagrid has his famous pink flowery umbrella. Yes. Uh, which is which I love. I mean, again, as a kid, this was like the perfect juxtap- juxtaposition of like large, you know, grizzly, intimidating looking person uh, who is otherwise then carrying this pink flowery umbrella, which is so innocuous and, and seems so innocent and and all the rest like it doesn't seem like it would go with his character but at the same time like perfectly fits um but he he says at some point in time in this chapter that his wand was in fact actually uh snapped in half right however we know that at some point in time it must have been repaired because clearly it is concealed inside of said pink umbrella yeah they always act like the pieces are concealed inside of there but like if your wand is broken in half like it cannot do magic anymore like we've seen ron's wand like almost split in half basically can't do magic and then you see harry uh, Holly wand is basically split in half is like holding on by a thread but it can't do magic anymore yep. so it's like it, if it's just the pieces next to each other in the umbrella it's not doing magic like it's been repaired which is just like it's like you, you couldn't possibly know it the first time you read it but it is like it is like a little nod to the elder wand and its power because of all the magic that the elder wand is supposedly able to do like way later on and way in Deathly Hallows they always talk about this crazy magic you never Never actually see it do anything right except repair Harry's Holly wand like that's the big magic you actually see it do so it's um, it, it is kind of like a cool like nod to that like as soon as you meet Hagrid yeah and, and again this goes back to to that point because it's like we know that Dumbledore is currently the one uh wielding the elder wand and yes. therefore it must be the case that if you know if if Hagrid declares that his wand was snapped in half like I, I don't I don't see it in Hagrid's nature to disclose that information if it didn't actually happen like yeah yeah wink wink they totally snapped it in half. They didn't actually, because clearly I'm holding it. Yeah. Um, I feel like, <laughs> but like it definitely was because apparent why it snapped in half is because he's sus- like they he, he is assumed to be a murderer basically yeah, yeah. to have opened the chamber of secrets yeah. released the monster within which led to the death of eventually Mona Myrtle. But so anyway, this goes back to my point where it's like the whole Fantastic Beast saga. It's like what is Hagrid obsessed with? Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. And the whole saga is leading up to, we know in 1992, the Chamber of Secrets will eventually be opened. Uh, so 50 years prior to that is 1942. Dumbledore's big duel with Grindelwald. 45. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're within the proper time frame for when Hagrid would have been aiding Dumbledore in any capacity whatsoever, including his role as the Keeper of Keys uh, at Hogwarts School, which is a, a role that is you know granted to him by Dumbledore immediately upon his expulsion. So what we have, again, always lar- like led ourselves to believe is that Hagrid's uh, role in helping Dumbledore take down Grindelwald in 1945 uh, was a favor repaid by Dumbledore, not only not only in lifelong trust, but also in the reparation of his wand. Yeah. The, it, okay. So it's so interesting to you about Hagrid being like immediately hired back on after being apparently like assumed to to murder or whatever because Dumbledore works at the school so Hagrid being hired back on and like Dumbledore never really believes it's Hagrid who killed the, Myrtle right, at yes, all yep, in so the like place. one it is baffling to me that literally no one in 50 years asks the ghost of Myrtle how she died oh yeah right <laughs> yeah. Like, like that didn't come up and that didn't come at, up like, part of the investigation right yeah, yeah. Or, I feel like there should be a line somewhere that's like anytime anyone asks her she just like balls and runs away or something easy kind of like, in, in fact yeah. it's probably just implied it's on some level that that is what happened. perhaps but, it's yeah. implied but it is baffling that that happens but it's also baffling to me that Dumbledore basically never assumes it's Hagrid which means that he doesn't think Aragog was the monster which means as far as he's concerned the monster is still at large oh true so it's like what is he doing for 50 years like with like the knowledge that the monster exists 
you not, know? <laughs> not to mention, at this point in time, uh, Dumbledore is not even headmaster. He is the transfiguration professor right. in Armando Dippet, uh, would yeah. be the headmaster. So Dumbledore's got a lot of pull. A lot of pull <laughs> to be like, okay, like, Armando, Armando, <laughs> hear me out, bro. Okay, I know Hagrid just apparently killed someone with a giant spider and is a murderer. Hear me out. We hire him. What do you think? <laughs> I don't think it'll cause we any We keep him whatsoever. around the students and give him a smidge of authority. You're in? He will cool. Have, he will have keys to everywhere. Yeah. Does that seem like a problem? <laughs> yeah, <or>? right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I want him to have access literally everywhere. So, everywhere. Yeah. The, so somehow, some way, Hagrid stays on. And the good news is, is that we, we of course, know that Hagrid is not a dangerous person. It is, in fact, a, a kind uh, soul and is just having prejudice used against him, uh, which we never want to see. But... Um, it, it's really amazing. Like I said, I mean, I think the warmth that Hagrid brings to the story almost immediately. I, I mean, wrote, he does light a fire right away. He does light a it's fire. It's almost right like away. magically warm too. Uh, right. Yes. Because yeah. it seems like I mean, uh, Uncle Vernon has tried to light a fire using like um, the the packaging from the potato chips yeah. that he's brought with him, which is like that was never going to be a fire ever. I know. Like um, even if those were f- even if potato like the I'm imagining like a like a like a bag of Lay's or something. Sure. Yeah. You like know, standard bag of potato standard chips. Bag of potato chips, which like one, even if you had four of those and they were highly flammable, they would burn for like ten seconds yeah, together. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you 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 do not have a crackling fire. You don't have a crackling fire. Yeah, but and on top of that, they're not flammable. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, the thing is, there is that it's like part of you is like, did did Hacker just have like wood? in his coat and it's like you might be like well that would be ridiculous who would carry wood but it's like he also has a live owl inside of his coat and mice and mice what are the mice mice. for yeah i Uh, know i guess maybe he needs to feed the owl i don't know could be yeah i mean Uh, yeah that that was the one at the end he's like there might be a few more field mice in there and it was like why why are you just carrying mice with you that's crazy (laughs) yes but but it is it's a it's a remarkable turnaround from the beginning of the chapter to the end to see that Harry goes from sleeping underneath this like bare thread rag on the soft piece of floor. Yeah, the softest piece of floor. Right. So, to, there does seem to be something rather, rather uh, cozy about. Uh, I think Hagrid says you can kip in this tonight, which I just, I just love that line. Yeah, um, I want to say there's like a like an early thing where his coat is described as like a bearskin coat here, but like for the rest of the story, it's a moleskin overcoat. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Which it seems like uh, moles being quite small, it's like how many moles? I know. <laughs> like, why do we switch gears? His, his his coat's also described as being black in this chapter, which is just like uh, that. Oh, I'm just like Hagrid wears a brown coat. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I the, agree. W- wrong, yeah. wrong. You got the wrong color here. Brown, brown coat. Brown yeah, coat. brown coat for Hagrid. I love that when he gets there, he says, like, he immediately asks them to brew some tea, and then he says, "I'd also say, no, I'd also not say no to something stronger if you've got it, mind." And then it's like he's just asking the Dursleys, like, "Do you? I'm here. Would you mind making me some tea, or do you have any alcohol?" Yeah, basically. And th- what's great about it is that, like, after they don't, he's like, "Don't worry, I've got literally all the supplies." And alcohol with me. A literal so, kettle will I come have, out of this. Coat. I have a kettle. I can make fire. I've got tea cups. I've got tea bags. I've got water to make the tea, and I've got some other amber liquid to take a swig of. So it's like he asks for all these things, but he's already got it all. He does already have it. it yeah. No, I noticed that exact same thing. It's like, oh. well, that's kind of funny. Oh. But I, I love the, I love the like the description of like soon the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage, squashy sausages. Ben, there's a. Squ- Squashy package of sausages. You're right. Well, but they sound delicious once cooked. They absolutely yeah. do. I just wanted to point out squashy because it's one of those very Harry Potter words that like you don't use in regular life very much, but like it's already been used to describe Uncle Vernon's face when uh, oh, yeah, Harry right. stepped yeah. on it, and now it's being used to describe the package of sausages. And it's like often the the word for like the Gryffindor armchairs and the sleeping bags in the Great Hall. It's like why is it, it's it's such a Harry Potter word? Squashy. Squashy. I know, yeah. yeah. So uh, we should we should adopt it into our vernacular yeah. even more. I just I'm, um, I just want a shirt that just says squashy. <laughs> That's a yeah. That's a great one. Our first official piece of merch. Is, yeah, is the squashy shirt. The squashy shirt. You know what though? It sounds now. You know, I was imagining a t-shirt, but I feel like it needs to be like a really like like thick, cozy kind of thing. Maybe it won't say squashy. It will just simply be it's squashy. It's just the squashy shirt. Like like a squashy sweater, and it's like <laughs> it's like the squashy sweater is just like a really oversized, cozy, thick 
sweater. Yeah. Uh, that you could that you could kip in if needed. If you um, could kip in. Yeah. <laughs> kip in. <laughs> um, but no, I love this. Again, you know, I mean, it's just it seems it seems good. I mean, I'm like hungry on behalf of literally all the occupants of the hut. So like the the sound of the the first six fat, juicy, slightly burnt sausages. Mm. Uh, it's like, oh man. I know. Every time like, I read that, I'm like, I'm hungry. I know. Yeah. It's like I'm 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 gonna go buy some squashy sausages. Yeah. Uh, as soon it. as as soon as I get out of work. Um, let's see here. Oh, there. I love this though. So shortly thereafter, um, Hagrid says, "Call me Hagrid." He said, "Everyone does." And this this is like one of those things where it's like we, we even mentioned it in the first chapter about how Rubeus means the red. color red, yeah. uh, which is, of course, his name. And yet whenever I think of Hagrid, I never think of it as if we are referring to him by his surname. Oh, yeah. Like, right. I, I, I feel like Hagrid is like his first name. Right. And his last name. And he also has another first name called Rubeus. Yeah. But Hagrid is the true name of Hagrid. Hagrid yeah. is the true name of Hagrid. Yeah. yeah it's it's pretty perfect. So um, I, I, li- I like the clarification there, though. Call me Hagrid. Call Everyone me does. Hagrid. Well, call me Jonathan. Almost no one does. <laughs> Except my wife. There you go. <laughs> the next thing is just basically Hagrid getting right down to business, freaking out at the Dursleys for not like... I love Hagrid's like backtracking. Like he's like what he assumes Harry knows is that he's a wizard. Like, like what does Hagrid think? Hagrid thinks that Harry knows that he's a wizard and that his parents were tragically killed by by a dark lord, a dark wizard, and that he knows what Hogwarts is. Yes, yes, but it turns out. Harry knows literally none of it. Not that magic is real. Not that wizards exist. Doesn't know what Hogwarts is. Doesn't know how his parents died. Any of it. And like you can see him like reeling, like, oh god, oh boy, Hagrid, I'm the one who has to tell you all of this. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, and and it's interesting because we've said it a couple of times as well, and I'm going to come back to it again. And then I think once we're past this chapter, I don't think we'll have to anymore. Um, but the it, it again, we will, we will learn that part of the reason that um. So much of this information was withheld actually is really not coming so much from Vernon's end of the spectrum, but rather Petunia's, uh, who had grown up with her sister Lily, who was like sent off to wizard school. And her parents were just so proud of the fact that there was a witch in the family. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, we we will uh, eventually learn of the uh, real, really extreme jealousy that Petunia had rather than um, like like initial disinterest like in in fact she she herself would have loved to have gone uh to hogwarts Hogwarts. and and felt like more left out by not being included um but then from there you know you you see that petunia's parents uh, were also just like just couldn't have been happier with this. Like they they didn't judge Lily for being, uh, you know, in this way different from what they had always known. And they they celebrated uh, the fact that she was in fact magical. And it came across in a way to Petunia that must have made her feel less than for then not having these abilities. Yeah, I and mean, you can see why Petunia then adopts this like not only like very normal stereotypically regular lifestyle but like adopts it as like this is absolutely the way things should be yes yes and, yeah. and it's it's like because there was there was like nothing that anybody could do to to uh to to make her a witch upon not having just been a witch in the first place um yeah she she sort of had to like go in in like a kind of overcorrect in the other direction but in addition to that i feel like it goes back to that sentiment where she i feel like was intending to make Harry feel discarded or less than by 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 being different in any capacity sure and, and therefore so she was i feel like treating dudley in the way she felt as though her parents had treated lily and therefore making harry feel the same way that she petunia would have felt growing up it's all coming full circle i know it's all coming full circle Indeed. so uh but that was that was jumping ahead just a little bit there so um yeah then we get to we get to the big moment ah go boil your heads both of you harry you're a wizard ah <sighs> But I can't be a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be a lizard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the meme where it's like, you're a wizard, Harry. And he's like, you're a hairy wizard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so spot on. So spot on. So exactly right. Uh, um, yeah, I love that line. This is one where it's like in the movies, they're like, you're a wizard, Harry. It's like it's a backwards, whereas in the book it says, Harry, you're a wizard. Either way, either delivery always gives me chills. Oh, yeah. Always like, oh, the beginning of the journey. I know. It's, it's really happening. And 
then of course you get the final momentous occasion where uh, at this point in time there is nothing the Dursley can, Dursleys can do to prevent Hagrid from reaching into his his coat to pull out a letter and physically hand it to Harry, who yep. is finally able to open it and uh, receives his admittance to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Right, we await your owl by no later than July thirty first, which is today, as the as the story goes. That is, uh, it's it's funny. It's like, oh, good. I guess Hagrid did have to come today. Yes. But I also think it's funny that the letter is signed Minerva McGonagall, which I mean, that's not really that funny or anything. But it does make me think that sh- that makes it, you know, seem like she's the one sending the letters, which to me then means she's the one being really like passive aggressive with like the address and like where Harry's laying on the floor and like the smallest bedroom. Like that's McGonagall being like. Humph. You know? <laughs> well, like, so I, I was curious about that as well, because I feel like there's the line where like where Hagrid says, like, I was allowed to do it to get you your letters and to get you to school and everything, but I'm not really supposed to be doing it otherwise. Um, and I, that was like I was like, or was it Hagrid? Because it almost feels like like a little bit. It feels more McGonagall than it feels Hagrid. To yeah. Me. Like I, Hagrid just feels like so good natured that I can't see the passive aggressive crossing his mind. Right. Not the McGonagall isn't also just just splendid but yeah. I, I could see her being a bit more like like she's watched the dursleys she has a greater scope of things she's like i knew from the moment we left you here that this was gonna be a problem <laughs> this, this was a bad idea I, i've been waiting my revenge right like and this is how i will do it yeah do do um the the next page we get the the he does it a couple of times and there's slightly different iterations each time but it's the haggard gives us galloping gorgons galloping gorgons which is a creature we never actually encounter in the story yep and and this exclamation I think is is eventually uh, replaced with Merlin's beard, Merlin's beard, um, or which, galloping gargoyles later in this same chapter. Yep, yep, we get that one as well. Um, Hagrid sends the letter to Professor Dumbledore, letting him know that uh, that he has successfully found Harry, and just throws it out. Into the <laughs> <air>. <laughs> I love how he includes a little note about the weather. I gave Harry his letter, taking him to buy things. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well. I know. Like, this, did you need to include that? <laughs> it reminds me so much of our grandfather, who I feel like. Like has a heavy emphasis on tracking and recording uh, the weather, like yes. in, like a daily journal. You're right. He has um, a weather journal. He has a weather journal, and it feels like I, I don't know if um, you know in in earlier days of of communication, it would be like a common thing to to just sort of like include in in, in like a letter or something. Because I always thought like oh, the weather's horrible. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like oh man, that's so funny that that like out of the the what like. 25 words he used. He he, he saved two to include a weather yeah. report. The weather's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I also like, uh, this is like a, just a little thing. We mentioned earlier where it sounds like McGonagall had this like almost sense of superiority about like the you know, being magical, I suppose. Like, oh, they're not completely stupid uh, back in chapter one. Yeah. So here where Hagrid's compa- or telling Harry what muggles are, it's like his uh, description of it is that uh, that's what we call non-magic folk like them. And it's your bad luck you grew up in a family of the biggest muggles I ever laid eyes on. It's like it's like he's almost using it there as like a little bit more derogatory towards like all muggles that like like it seems like it is a classification of people which is non magical. But then like if you're like a muggle, you could also be like derogatory and like a, you're like aggressively non magic on purpose. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's like it's like the the scale of muggle that you <clears throat> are, and the more muggly you are, the worse you are. And it's right. Like, well, yeah, that's that's also probably. Not not terribly fair. Not helpful. Like, not know, helpful. People, yeah. People can't help not being magical. Yeah. Um, Dude, there's a little, I feel like there's a little bit of a Snape hint here in the next paragraph too, where Petunia's talking about um, Lily coming home. Uh, she came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. So what's interesting about that is that um, that shouldn't be allowed. Like yes, it clearly be Petunia has character. like an exact has several exact examples of like things Lily was doing, turning teacups into rats. I think that's even a lesson you get to see later on. Yeah. But it's like and we know that the way the trace works is that like if you're in a muggle household and you're a wizard kid and you do magic, it'll like they'll be able to hone in on you because magic happened there. They won't know that like, oh, Harry Potter did magic at the Dursleys. They'll just be like, well, magic happened at the Dursleys and Harry's living there. So it was Harry. So it was Harry, yeah. so it was Harry even though it was Dobby. It, but- it's always a, a very, very unfair advantage that, that kids that come from uh, wizard families then have. Oh, I know. 
they can practice all summer. Oh, I know. And they're like, we rely on wizard parents to patrol this particular thing. And I'm like, this is the reason. This is like, that is the exact reason Slytherin House has won the House Cup seven years in a row. Because all the <laughs> all the other houses are like, kids, stop doing magic. And all the, all the Slytherin families you know were just like, all right, here we go. They're not going to know it's you. Get down here. We're practicing Lumos. We're going to do the summoning charm. We're going to get ahead over the summer. Cool? Cool. Yes. It's like, yeah. And of course, and if you're like, and if you're in Slytherin, you're you're the kind of student who's like, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I want to be ahead. Yeah. yeah. Underlying, underlying. Any advantage. Yep. But so the fact that Lily was at home turning teacups into rats and not getting caught suggests that she couldn't have been doing it at her house because she would have been zeroed in on immediately. Right. Because yes. uh, there. So it suggests that she was doing it with a different wizard or witch who lived nearby. Not that you'd know anything about the trace or anything at this point, but um, it almost it almost definitely means her her and Snape were doing it together. Yes, we're yep. hanging out in this way. Uh, it must must have been in proximity, close enough to um, Snape's mother. Yeah, that that it would be. Um, acceptable or that the at the very least the ministry for magic would believe that this was an acceptable use of magic and not and not underage yeah um as we scroll down the page a little bit there there's the um the exclamation as hagrid discovers the fact that uh harry is under the impression that his parents were killed in a car crash um his reaction is kind of interesting because in, in a, this has always sort of stood out to me because it's, it, it's a couple of different things he says how could a car crash kill lillian james potter like Partially on some level, it's like as if Hagrid is suggesting like, yeah, as a wizard, you would never be subject to a car crash. Like, like this, right. this would not be something that would like. So it makes you wonder whether or not um, like uh, some of the accidental magic that Harry has performed up until this stage of his life. Yeah. If, if like in the event that you were a wizard who was driving an automobile, which under most circumstances you probably just don't need to yeah. because you have other means of travel, which would otherwise be faster. Um, but it, it almost suggests that somehow possibly like wizards in that moment might enact a form of wandless or nonverbal magic that might like cause the cars to like just bounce or something. Yeah. Like it that, does seem you know? like there's like some sort of yeah involuntary reaction that would occur to protect wizards in a situation like this. It's yes. like, like we talked earlier, like with Mrs. Fig, like there's no reason her leg should have been broken for any amount of time because she knows wizards who can mend it immediately. Lickety split. Yeah. Lickety split. Lickety not so split, exactly. as it were. Yeah. And then yeah. So it's like, and it's like, um, if you have regular wounds or ailments as a wizard, they can cure them immediately. It's that they have their own set of like magical wounds and ailments that require like magical cures and potions and stuff like that. So. Um, you're right. It does seem like it's un. It does suggest that like something as mundane as a car crash could not possibly kill a wizard. Yes. Um. Although Harry and Ron do crash the car into the <laughs> the, whopping into the whopping willow, willow, which I guess they don't die from though. That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, um. The other bit I was gonna say about this line is that I I love Hagrid's uh way way of responding to this. But he goes, "It's an outrage, a scandal, a scandal." I love yeah. the use of scandal yeah. there, and they they carried it over into the films as well. He says it in the film. Yeah. Uh, also, and I'm always like, scandal. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, man. Let's see. Uh, moving on. Next, he has to tell Harry about Voldemort and how he survived about it. And uh, I love when he's like, he's so nervous about saying the name Voldemort here. And Harry makes the, the suggestion, could you write it down? And he says, nah, I can't spell it. I'm like, that always bothers me because like Voldemort is not hard to spell at <laughs> all. It is spelled exactly like it sounds. And like, I mean, he just wrote a letter, you know, like the word tomorrow is harder to spell than Voldemort. You know, that's in there. Right. He yeah. correctly spelled professor and Dumbledore. Like, I think you could handle Voldemort. Yeah. At least you could write it down to the point that Harry could read what you think it sounds like. That's, that's you know, true. yeah. <laughs> I mean, spelling doesn't terribly matter if you, you know, as long as you get the rough, the rough uh, hue yeah. of it. The other kind of interesting thing uh, from an audiobook standpoint is at this point in the audiobook, Jim Dale is pronouncing uh, Voldemort uh, in, in that way where it's a silent T at the end, the yeah. Vald Voldemort. Uh, and as the films are release, released, they do pronounce the T. And as of book five, I was actually just reading this fun fact. I didn't know it. As of book five, Jim Dale actually starts to refer to him as Voldemort instead of mm. Voldemort, okay. uh, which I just found to be kind of 
interesting. That oh, the, like that, he just sort of switches. That he, that he like changes course. Yeah, mm. like five five bucks in. So yeah, that's, that's no, sort of correct. One. It is. It does. Uh, it is an important occasion that it's the first time Harry hears the name Voldemort. Yep, uh, that's is when true. Hagrid says it. That's kind of interesting. Uh, we talked before about whether or not. Um, people coming out of the Imperius curse would have been a cue that Voldemort was gone. Hagrid kind of confirms that here. Like, didn't know who to trust, didn't dare get friendly with strange wizards. People came out of the trances and stuff like that. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yep. Um, now, we also get a little bit more explanation about uh, Lily and James. There's a little bit of like one of those like consistency questions as well, where it says, uh, your mom and dad were as good a witch and wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their day. Yep. Um, interestingly, we will eventually learn that uh, out of the Marauders, it is not James who is prefect, but yep. rather Renus Lupin. Um, and so his eventual assignment to head boy um, is, is kind of interesting because it means that they don't exclusively pull from, from, from the prefix. prefix. Yeah. However, possibly could pull from Quidditch captains, which James would have been in his sixth year. Um, so, and Harry also eventually is Quidditch captain. So that's it, true. It, and at the very least, it sounds like Quidditch captains and prefix have similar um, allowances in terms of additional uh, amenities and, and yeah. use of the prefix restrooms and that type of thing. So um, it, it's possible that that's how that comes to be. It's not a surprise at all that Lily is head girl because yeah. she's just sort of extraordinary. I guess we don't know for sure that she was a prefect, but... Um, that's a good point as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but either way, to too bad for... I've Yeah, the assumption I've, I always had... Like before you do that math is that you need to be a prefect and that like then when you're going into your seventh year, it's like just one of the what uh, there's there's two there's two prefects per year, right? One boy, one girl per Se- house. Seems like one boy, one girl per house. Oh, yeah. yeah. So then you'd think it's just between you and the three other prefects from the other houses. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That gets to be like the head boy of all the prefects or whatever. But right. alas, no, it can also just be James Potter over there. Can, can you imagine how mad all those prefects would be? They'd be like, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I, do you think Snape was a prefect? <laughs> Oh, I super love to think that he was. <laughs> I know. don't know. I, I know. Su- I can sort of see it. Though. I mean, he's a, he's a great student. Uh, Slughorn right. taught him. Right. That's um, true. And he so. would have and he would have been great in Slughorn's class specifically because he's yeah. great at potions. He's great at potions. So who would have yeah. been excelling there? We know he like was filling out his defense against the dark arts. OWL really hard. I guess he would have been uh, selected for prefect before that. But it does seem like he was. He was in that crowd. Probably wasn't like super popular. It doesn't sound like so. Maybe the like I could see Slughorn over oh, like looking past him for that because he's got the Slug Club. He's like into, yeah, like, well connected people. And not, Snape is not really that yeah that kind of student. Yeah, I, I mean not that you have to like necessarily be like popular to be like a prefect, but typically yeah, I Percy. would yeah Percy. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Percy is a prefect. Yeah, I can see you'd want like probably a very well a considered well liked student by your peers to be a prefect though. You, you want them to have the, the some measure of authority uh, and that probably comes with not being somebody that is going to just be questioned every turn. But so. at, that, at, at that exact rate though, like the marauders are then picking on a prefect if if Snape is a prefect, then the Marauders are picking on him, and he is not like playing that card at all. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but I guess I mean Lupin's there as well, but he's sort of just off in the background, like yeah, well, whatever. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean they, they specifically say they think that they assigned Lupin as the prefect as in <clears throat> hopes of it it calming down the rest of the Marauders. But. but I also like the idea of Snape being a prefect just because that it means like as far as Snape's concerned, it's like him and Lupin and the Ravenclaw and Hufflepuffs, and they're like, nah, it's none of you guys. It's James Potter. He's like. He's like you have are you what <laughs> no it is not james potter <laughs> <laughs> oh that would be so infuriating yeah so infuriating yeah, it would when, be. yeah when when you're in high school and you've got one of those one of those people who is just like the the bane of your existence and they they uh find glory it's just like <laughs> nothing could be yeah. worse oh what's worse is he gonna ask out the girl i like what <laughs> no <laughs> She said he was a toe rag. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, so much for that. <laughs> we, we've gotten really off the rails here. Uh, we learn a little bit more about uh, early members of the First Order of the Phoenix, including um, the McKinnons, the Bones, and the Pruitts, who yes. we, we've previously mentioned before. The Pruitts, uh, Fabian and Gideon, are in fact uh, Molly Molly's Weasley's two brothers. brothers. Yep. Yep. And uh, it kind of just goes to show to Harry that it wasn't just his family that was impacted. And we will eventually learn, um, obviously, that now um, the Pruitts. It's 
you know, nieces, niece and nephews will be fellow students with with Harry in the form of the Weasleys. Yep. Um, we will have Susan Bones, who is a fellow classmate um, of Harry's as well, and yep. will eventually meet her Madam aunt, Bones. Madam, yeah. yeah, Madam Bones, correct. Um, so it is the case that Harry is going to school, and then the one that that goes unmentioned is, of course, also the um, Longbottoms. Yeah. Um, well, they they weren't. I mean, well, so this is Hagrid's a little bit incorrect what he says here because he says that he killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age, including the McKinnons, Bones, and the Pruitts. But I think later on it's confirmed that the Pruitts were actually killed by a group. It was like the two of them versus five Death Eaters to okay. take them down. So either he's speaking more like on Voldemort's orders they I, were killed. That's how I read it. Yeah. yeah. But also then the Longbottoms would not have been attacked under Voldemort's orders because they're attacked after he falls. That's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. But but what it means though is that Harry will eventually be going to school with the, with a uh, potential handful of other students whose lives have been massively impacted in the same way that his has yes. been. Yes. Um, just Harry has kind of like his own uh, kind of specific and unique role inside of that. Yep. Um, let's see here. Um, Hagrid eventually uh, goes on to say that like some say he died. Kite Swallow in my opinion. Don't know if he had enough human left in him to die though um it's a pretty good guess <laughs> I, I was like yeah i highlighted that and i was like hagrid is pretty much dead on pretty right? much yeah uh, pun intended on that one but uh basically because when it when it comes down to it um like the, the exact reason why voldemort does not die in this cir- circumstance is because his own physical being his his uh we we've always called it like voldemort prime the version of him that is like the physical body existence that includes like his mind and and um other you know body and everything uh like it it can't be destroyed in that circumstance because he's otherwise anchored so yeah and it's like i mean not having enough human left in him to die is exactly basically what's happening it's like because he keeps splitting his soul which makes him less and less human so it's not that he doesn't have enough human left in him to die it's that all the human parts of him have been spread into eight other things yes yeah or seven other things i guess right um so then we we kind of go forward we get a little bit more back and forth with with hagrid and the dursleys who are sort of like you know kind of just having it out of as to whether or not this is going to happen yep um Hagrid has a cool line here where we can just give a little bit of backstory but Hagrid said his name has been down uh ever since he was born yep, I highlighted the exact same line I was like oh that's interesting because it means that he Harry upon being born was immediately showing signs of magic yes yes, yes. and <laughs> this this is again kind of like further reading that you have to do in the deeper wider wizarding world However, uh, you can uh, go on to Pottermore and learn about the Quill of Admittance and Book of Acceptance. Yep. Do I have those the right way? I think so. Okay. Those are all um, the right words. All the right <laughs> words. But the the idea, I believe, is usually that the Quill will recognize uh, when you have first like exhibited some amount of magical ability and it won't be penned into the page until it's like fully confirmed that it's enough magical ability yeah, to like attend the, the school. The book and the quill both have to agree that you've like displayed enough magic to come to Hogwarts or something. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. basically it means that like from the word go, from the moment Harry was born, it was like beyond a shadow of a doubt. This, like, this, this boy Potter. is magical. Yeah. yeah, so that's what determines like whether or not you get your letter. On. Conversely, though, I think we eventually find out that Neville's name doesn't get written in the book until he's like eight or something. Yeah, when his uh, 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 uncle Algy drops him out of a window. Drops by, him out of a window. By mistake, I yeah. believe, and he bounces. But that's also kind line. of back to the car crash thing. It's like, what? A d- a fall from a tower, kill the long bottoms. It's a scandal. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's yeah. like, why would that, that, that wouldn't happen. That w- like, yeah, like, like yeah. magic would protect them. Magic would, would protect fine. them. Yeah. A hundred percent. No. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yep. We get uh, uh, Vernon, honestly, is, is, is exhibiting quite a bit of bravery. All things being equal. He says, I'm not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him magic tricks, uh, which is what, you know, Vernon is, is yelling at Hagrid. Yeah. Which I mean, um, what a misunderstanding of the system. I mean, it's absolutely free freaky to go to Hogwarts, you know, exactly, so exactly. Uh, like you don't have to pay anything. I mean, right. I guess you have to buy the materials to go, but even that it's like, actually you don't because Harry's just got a fortune of his own. Right. I know this is like one of those things where it's like, oh man, I, I almost wish Hagrid just dunks on them. In this moment. I know. Um, but of course he, he's a bit more, uh, his hackles kind of go up at the, at the uh, reference to Dumbledore as a crackpot old fool. Uh, and you get to just see like one of those, like where, where like Hagrid's, Hagrid's life, his livelihood, you know, has been um, like 
uh, so helped along uh, throughout the years by Dumbledore's you know approval and support of him. Yep. And you can tell that that, that runs awfully deep for Hagrid, um, who says, never insult Albus Dumbledore in front of me, um, which, you know, it's just like one of those kind of like, the, I, 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 I don't know what I love so much about it, but it's like the, the like, absolute nature of allegiance between people is just something that like makes me happy yeah. in, in this case, because I know all the people involved are good people. Um, it, it's like, yes. Okay. Hooray. Um, yeah. And again, it's just nice to see the Dursleys being taken down a notch. Oh, I know. And then he uh, tries to turn Dudley into a pig and then uh, has a, the, the fantastic line afterwards where he says, meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he was so much like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. <laughs> Which I, just, like, I love it. It's like, there's a, like, the, like, constant like underflow of like magic has like a sense of humor about it and it's like yeah we don't um it's pretty much done so tail <laughs> <laughs> right right especially because yeah. he's like like all, you know again uh, Hagrid has, has come in he's he's done a, a decent bit of magic I mean he lit the fire you know like yeah He's, he's done some stuff since they've been in the room uh, and he's done all those things just fine. But I guess Transfiguration, certainly a, a slightly more complex Slightly art. more complex, but as far as he's concerned, there's a very reasonable explanation for it. Right, right, right. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like how similar are these, these two things? It's like, well, if it's pretty similar already, then... Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not like sympathy. It's not like, yeah, you know, it's like, no. So if it, the more similar it is, the easier it is to do it. It's like, as far as magic's concerned, it's like, you want me to turn, you want me to turn the box into a trunk? Like, it's already... It's already He's a box. It's, it's there. It's pretty We're much a good. trunk. Yeah. Much I'll, I'll, I'll trunkify your box, but okay. it'll still be a box. Yeah. Because the box was a trunk in the first place. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we get the we get the line, of course, and we, we've kind of already touched on this. The uh, they snap my wand in half and everything, but Dumbledore let me stay on as gamekeeper. Great man, Dumbledore. Great man, Dumbledore. Great man, Dumbledore. Um, yeah, and then that, that pretty much closes us out of the chapter. It um, does. Harry does ask him, why were you expelled? And he just skates right past that, not willing to be like, oh, you know, <clears throat> murder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never yeah. mind, never mind. It's like, geez, Harry, wait for book two, why don't you, man? Know, seriously, can you have some patience? Gosh. Like, so gotta leave some mysteries left to be uh, left to be solved. Um, but yeah, so that that'll. Uh, you know, of course, we've got our, our little our little couple of door mice in one of the pockets. Oh, I know. <laughs> why do you have? Why are you carrying mice around, man? I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. don't get it. I mean, I my only explanation is that he would use it to feed the owls, but like also like Harry, would, you know, never. It's not like Harry's ever keeping mice up in his bedroom. If you know, Hedwig needs to eat. He's just like, just go outside and just. Hunt. Right, right. You know? Yeah, you know, and it's funny too, though, because uh, you know, if 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 you know us, uh, you know, through any of our other works, you'll know that we're a big fan of the uh, fantasy series Name of the Wind, and Name one of the Wind. like common tropes in Name of the Wind, not even tropes, but just things that come back to a lot, is cloaks with numerous little pockets. Yes, and th- it's like the idea, like that, like you know, you can you can always like a like a good wizard almost always has lots of little little trinkets and objects kind right. of stashed away in their cloak, and so I I actually reading this now, um, you know, I, I do have a little bit of that like curiosity as like whether or not this was like uh like continuing that trope in the realm of fantasy novels oh, sure. a little bit where it's sort of like yeah like you know carrying lots of stuff and lots of odd little pockets it's like this is this is like what you do this right. is like you know your source of a partial source of power um so i don't know if that's like a nod to that or at all or if it's just a pure coincidence but either way i like hagrid's coat full of stuff i it's, do too it, like I I, one funny. of my favorite things in like any story is whenever the main character gets like a new like tool or object or like weapon or something. Yeah, it always yep. feels like oh, you got another little thing to put in your arsenal. That's super fun. Like Harry gets the cloak and then he gets the map and eventually he has the sword and it's like just getting all these little power ups all over the place. I, I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's like you're you're like actively like playing the video game exactly, and getting yeah. all those power ups as as you go. Um, that being said, as long as we're talking about the coat, we can talk a little bit about the chapter art. Oh yeah, as ever we goodness. got we have a glorious photo of glorious um, shot of Hagrid of Hagrid who is who has dustbin sized hands and feet the size of baby dolphins <laughs> is that what it says feet the size of baby dolphins i believe it does i think I you're be- right yeah yeah i think I, that's the description i really um, like the uh the owl on his shoulder here because its eyes are just going every which way in oh, yeah. the chapter art yeah. <laughs> it's just like Burr! 
really kind of derpy looking owl. You get, yeah, I know it's true. You get a glorious shot of the of the umbrella as well, which is which is just great. Um, I, I I I would I call it eleven out of ten in terms of, uh, of yeah, chapter heart. Fantastic, really really captures the magnitude of the man. As yes, it were. yes indeed. Yeah. Um, although as we as we do look ahead to chapter five, we have Diagon Alley. Diagon as our, Alley. As next week's episode. Diagonally. Um, di- diagonally. <laughs> I love like I feel like when they say that like they're like hmm what a hmm, yeah I, th- I thought that's what he said that's a that's a completely unreasonable mistake to make but i think that's what he said yes like yeah, they're yeah. my like diagon alley and diagonally are complete there's just no reason at all those even sound the same I, that that to me yeah. almost felt like one of these things where uh like uh, like people met diagon alley and found it to be wonderful and whimsical and nobody was put not not nearly enough people were putting together the wordplay which was <coughs> diagonally yeah um and and i almost felt like it was like all right are people not getting what's going people, on yeah like, like <laughs> do they not see the, the the sheer cleverness of this name right it's like well, I'm gonna make you. Yeah, <laughs> like we're, we're on book two. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm, oh I'm, yeah. Hair is gonna accident himself right on over into nocturnally. It's the same game. It's the exact same thing. Oh, yeah. nocturnally. Yeah, nocturnally. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, no. So it's uh, it's it's amazing word play. I'm very excited. Uh, and this this is like you know speaking of of watching your character gain all of the new little power ups, all the new abilities, like going shopping in the wizarding world when when Harry just a day ago had no idea this aspect of himself. Oh, I know. And the the very next day he's out shopping for cauldrons and wands and robes like nothing in my mind uh could be better uh so i'm, I'm looking forward to delving into again chapter five diagon alley oh i know we get to meet some brand new characters in here we get to meet Ollivander. we get to meet draco malfoy true i know it's yeah. exciting it's gonna be a big chapter for sure yes, it uh, is. But jay do you have a uh a review i sure can, do man oh boy oh boy okay All right on so me. uh this review is from i think i'm saying it right neve just n-e-i-v VH Neve just says so ready for this a perfect opportunity for my fiance to get his first reread of the series in almost 20 years we love the Carlin bros and I took and I took place in their walking challenge over the summer and had a blast and I know I'll have a blast with this podcast too amazing amazing yeah we we had a a really fun event earlier this year that hopefully we'll be able to do again in the future uh called our miles managed step competition Mm -hmm. uh it was really cool we we basically like charted course from uh platform nine and three quarters well king's cross station uh rather in london and ran it all the way up you know kind of the coastline of england to sort of remote scotland to a specific set of coordinates that we once found to be as like our that's right our our like believed to be location yeah of um the hogwarts castle that was oh, that that video was so fun because yeah like the idea is that like you're not supposed to know where hogwarts castle is specifically but it's sort of like yeah it's up it's up there uh it's, it's in the north it's yeah right, right yeah like, scotland like the, the mountains scotland. in the locks it's in the mountains and there's a lake and there's that and so there, like we found like a specific lake that has uh, a castle that looks ruined on it and it's like on this little island and it's like oh no of course of course it has to look like a ruined castle because, because that's, that's what, what it would look like to muggles right. and then like we even you because it's on an island it's like the island is so little um if you go on like google maps like you can't drop yourself on the island itself but you can like drop yourself on like a piece of shoreline near it and there was this like w- like i i mean i think it was just like a glitch in the in google maps on that day but we tried it on a few computers and it happened on all of them where like if you put yourself on the piece of the map closest to the island and try to like spin around there was like you could see literally everything like from the 360 view you could look around and see all the trees behind you but like the one square where the island where the castle should be like would not load no on matter any what screen. and it, it was, was like, like what it was like is what is happening on? like it's like it's like being magically concealed that's what's happening it's messing with google maps like yes it's magic at work so that was our um that was our exact coordinates confirmed of hog Wars castle if you want to check out that video that was a super fun one it was really cool yeah, yeah. so but but anyway yeah so to, back to neve's uh you know description of our of our step competition so we we basically had like a 120 mile journey so as you would walk out in the real world 
your progress would be mapped uh, on, on like a little dot traveling up the coast. And we had like all these little checkpoints along the way, yeah. and like little things you could interact with. And uh, it, it was really fun. It was a cool community thing. I think we had over 5,000 people participate. It was, was fun. Which yeah. was really amazing. There was medals if you got, if you finished. There were indeed. There <coughs> were indeed. Yeah. So really, really great event. So uh, something to hopefully look forward to, uh, you know, in, in future years to come. We'll be sure to let you know about it if, if and when that does become a reality. Um, but otherwise, guys, I think that is all for this week. And until next week in Chapter 5, which again is Diagon Alley. Yeah, so thanks for joining us. If you want to leave us a review, maybe we'll read it here on the show. But uh, otherwise, we look forward uh, to, yeah, Chapter 5, Diagon Alley here on Through the Gryffindor.